Hello everyone, welcome to today's session. If you are new to our channel, please subscribe it for the daily videos. Today I am going to discuss regarding Crimean Congo hemorrhagic fever. The Crimean Congo hemorrhagic fever is a widespread disease caused to by a tick-borne virus that is Nero virus of the Binia Verde family. The CCHF virus causes severe viral hemorrhagic fever outbreaks with a case fatality rate of 10 to 40 percentage. Let's have a look on transmission of this disease. Transmission, especially those the genus Hyloma are both a reservoir and a vector for the CCHF virus. Numerous wild and domestic animals such as cattle, goats, sheep and hares serves as amplifying host for this virus. Transmission to the humans occurs through the contact with the infected ticks or animal blood. CCHF can be transmitted from one infected human to another by contact with the infectious blood or body fluids. Documented spread of CCHF has also occurred in hospitals due to the improper sterilization of medical equipments, reuse of the injection needles and contamination of the medical supplies. Who all are the risk factors? Animal herders, livestock workers and slaughterhouse workers in endemic areas are at the risk of CCHF. Healthcare workers in the endemic area are at the risk of infection through unprotected contact with the infectious blood and body fluids. Individuals and international travelers with contact to livestock in endemic region may also be exposed. What are the signs and symptoms of this disease? The onset of CCHF is sudden with initial signs and symptoms including headache, high fever, back pain, joint pain, stomach pain and vomiting. Red eyes, a flushed face, a red throat and fatigue that is red spots on the palate are common. Symptoms may also include jaundice and in severe cases changes in mood and sensory perception also. As the illness progresses, a large areas of severe bruising, severe nosebleed and uncontrolled bleeding at the injection sites can be seen beginning on about the fourth day of the illness and lasting for about two weeks. In documented outbreaks of CCHF, fatality rates in hospitalized patients have ranged from 9% to as high as 50%. What about the diagnosis of this disease? The antigen capture enzyme linked immunosorbent assay that is ELISA Real-time polymerase chain reaction that is RT-PCR, virus isolation attempts, ELISA, IgG and IgM. Immunohistochemical staining can also show evidence of viral antigen in formalin fixed tissues. Later in the course of disease, in people surviving, antibodies can be found in the blood, but antigen, viral RNA and virus are no more present and detectable. What about the treatment options of this disease? Treatment for CCHF is primarily supportive. The care should include careful attention to fluid balance and correction of the electrolyte abnormalities, oxygenation and hemodynamic support and also appropriate treatment for the secondary infections. The virus is sensitive in vitro to the antiviral drug ribavirin. It has been used in the treatment of CCHF patients reportedly with some benefits. And recovery, the long-term effects of CCHF infection have not been studied well enough in survivors to determine whether or not specific complications exist. However, recovery is slow. Research Report An inactivated mouse brain derived vaccine against CCHF has been developed and is used on a small scale in Eastern Europe. However, there is no safe and effective vaccine currently available for human use. Further research is needed to develop these potential vaccines as well as determine the efficacy of different treatment options including ribavirin and other antiviral drugs. Whatever treatment options we have, the prevention is better than cure. Let's see the preventive aspect of this disease. Agricultural workers and others working with animals should use insect repellent on exposed skin and clothing. Insect repellents containing DEET are the most effective in warding of ticks. Wearing gloves and other protective clothing is also recommended. Individuals should also avoid contact with the blood and body fluids of the livestock or human who shows the symptoms of the infection. It is important for the healthcare workers to use proper infection control precautions to prevent the occupational exo exposure. That's all for today. See you on the next day. Take care. Have a nice day.